Hey everybody, great job if you've made it this far. This is the funnest part and you've done a lot of work to get here. We are going to actually place all these really cool items in our house and I'm gonna show you how. First, I kinda wanna put everything in a pile so I'm gonna drag and drop like this. I wanna make sure that that little plus sign is showing when I drag and drop, so I'm not accidentally resizing, but you can use the undo button if you make any mistakes. Now, I need to copy and paste all of this into my house. First, I'm going to select it. So you're gonna click somewhere that's off and below or off and above. And you're going to select everything at once like this. So I'm clicking and dragging, let go. There it is, that's everything. It's all selected right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Control C or you can do Control X. So Control X is to cut it. Control C is to copy it. I'm gonna cut it. What that does is it gets rid of it. So then now this page is good. And I'm gonna come up here and paste it. Now, when you paste it, you wanna be careful that you put it somewhere safe right away. By safe, I mean right now it's touching the haunted library and the pet room. So if I try to move everything, it's gonna be in the way. So while it's all still blue, it's all still selected, I'm gonna just move it somewhere that there isn't other stuff to touch, like way up there. Cause now I can move stuff around and I'm not gonna mess with my room. So first, personally, I am just going to take the time to spread it all out up here away from the rooms so I can see what I have to work with. Now I can start dragging and dropping these things into my rooms, which is really exciting. One thing I want to show you is that depending on how you like to set things up, you might end up accidentally covering the title of your room. And that's not the end of the world, but here's some things you can do. I can click on this. I don't have to go find that word. So you know how I said art room underneath there? I don't have to go find it. I clicked on the box. So now I can come up to this menu. If you don't have this menu, click here. And there are some things I can do. So if I click on the align button, I could put the text at the top, and now we can see it again. Now I know it's not perfect because you know, then if I wanna put my easel there, it still might get covered. So you could make it really small, you know, put it back in the middle and just plan around it. If some of your words get covered, that's not the end of the world. As long as you know what room is what is which, and you can always make a separate text box off to the side too, to show which room is which. So that's one thing that you can do with the text. You can also um, left align it, middle, right, etc. So that's one thing you can do. I'm gonna show you a couple other things you can do. For example, with this library, I could make it bigger or smaller by adjusting the little squares right there. I could also flip it. To flip it, I'm going to come up here to Format, Format Options, Size and Rotation, and here I can flip it horizontally or vertically. Another option with these items is to recolor them. So you can change the colors like this. I'm going to hit the Undo button to put it back the way that it was. So I am just going to have fun resizing things and I'm gonna worry about the text at the end. So see how that text got covered up? I will kind of adjust that at the end once I figure things out. See that couch? I want that on top of my rug and I just set it down and it was selected when I set it down and now it's not. So now it's kind of hard to grab, but there it is. I'm going to come up to arrange, order, and click bring to front because I want that above the couch. So that is another trick that you can use. I just placed this pumpkin pie, I'm turning it into a rug. I want it below my bed. 
but I'm not going to click the pumpkin pie and send it to the back because that'll put it below my actual house. And if I click send backward one step at a time, it's gonna take forever because there's so many items on this page. Instead, I'm just gonna take the thing I want in front instead. I'm going to click on that bed and bring that to the front instead. Another thing you can do is use this little circle up here to rotate. If you want something rotated exactly 90 degrees, you'll come up to format options. So that's format. You need to make sure the item is selected. So I have my gaming de desk selected. You'll open size and rotation. And here it is 90 degrees. So you can flip it until you like the way that it looks. I also am making some of these candles really small and it's selected right now, which is good. I'm going to use my keyboard, the arrows to move it now, because when you make something really small, it can actually be pretty tricky to move around. So right now it's still selected, make it tiny like that. It's still selected, which is important because I'm going to come to arrange, bring it to front, and then I can use my keyboard to move it around. You can also zoom, but remember, this is the best way to zoom, not using your whole screen to zoom. It's better to zoom within Google Slides. Okay, and this is my house. I'm really excited about it. So as you can see, I did end up covering up a lot of my the names of my rooms. So this is really up to you if you want to keep it that way, if you know what your rooms are. But like I was saying before, I could click on this. So I don't actually have to go click on the text. I can just click on this box and I can adjust and try to figure out a way to have it showing if possible. But personally, I am really excited about my furniture. So that's okay. Another thing you can do if you want to is you can make a text box. And so I could write bedroom like this, select that, make it the font that I want. I could give it a highlight if I want it to show. And then I can move it back on top like this. I can make it bigger or smaller and I could even put it off to the side so that it's not super in the way. So this is really up to you, also up to your teacher. Since I did that, I actually don't want that one to show anymore. So now I'll just put it back to middle. So this is up to you if that's something you want to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just so you can see. So I'm gonna come through to each of mine and highlight them in white so they show. These ones are already part of the shape, so no text box needed for me. That room I think will be fine. I just will put it up top. So top like that, and maybe I'll right align it. And then I'll come and select it like that and give it a white background. So these are just design preferences. The Owlry definitely needs a text box because there's nowhere I'm really gonna be able to put that. So draw a little text box. I like to draw it over here so I don't accidentally mess with other stuff. Now I select this and I'll make it the font and the size and all of that that I want.
Astronomy tower, I think, needs it too. And you know what? There's nowhere I'm going to be able to put that where it's not showing. So I'm actually going to delete it and then do my text box. Again, this step is not necessary. It just depends on how much design work you want to do for your haunted house and how you want it to look in the end. Haunted library, I think is okay, but let me go ahead and, and see. I'll scoot my gaming thing over with my arrows. Candy room, I think I'm gonna get rid of the text and rewrite a caption for that one. All right, looks like we're about finished. I'm going to show you one more thing really quickly. At this point, if you wanted to add more stuff to your house, you could, but it is not for the faint of heart, meaning it, it is a little bit challenging. But if you really thought, man, I really want another pumpkin and another candle, let's say. I could do that, but you need to be very careful about it. So let's say that I really wanted one more pumpkin and one more candle. I could do that. Copy, paste. So I did control C and control V just there. Um, and then let's say I want another one of these candles. Copy, paste. I'll put it in the art room. So I just added a pumpkin and I added a candle. That is going to affect how much money I spent. So originally with the stuff I got at first, I spent $1,470 and this is how much money I have left over. I just decided I was gonna spend some more money. How much more did I spend? I added a pumpkin, which is $5, and then I also spent a candle, which is $3, so that's $8. So that means I spent eight more dollars, so I spent more money, and now I don't have those $8 anymore, which means I need to subtract. 994 minus eight is 986. So I have less money, and I spent more money. I spent eight more dollars and I took eight dollars away. 